All right. Welcome, guys. This is going to be episode 91, I believe. I'll be honest. I kind of did a whole bunch of episodes this week, um, so I kind of lost track. I'll be real. But this episode has been probably talked about for like a year, I think, <laughs> or longer since I started it. I've been talking to to you about getting you on here. Um, and you've I got to honestly say thank you. Um, you have you have helped me a lot in the past year and a half with a lot of, you know, random conversations um as you're traveling a abroad you know you'll you'll answer one day and then the next question will be answered in a couple of days due to how tr much you're traveling um but i just want to thank you one for coming on and also just for being somebody that has constantly um helped me out with the podcast with ideas and and just doing what you already do but also on a personal level as well so thank you for that um just Introduce yourself, Matt Sorrent. Um, let everybody know who you are and uh, also how, how you got to the billet that you're currently in. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me on, man. I always, uh, it's always a good opportunity where you can, you know, get on and just, just have frank discussions and kind of cut through, you know, all the layers. There's a lot of folks out there. You guys are, are fighting a good fight. And sometimes it's just, it's hard to get word out. Right. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm a uh, I'm Master Vance Jeremiah. I'm the uh, currently I'm the Micric Marketing Chief. So my uh, my path throughout life, I am a uh, I'm an eighty four twelve by trade. I'm one of those guys. Uh, <laughs> but but I uh, I started off life as a Signals Intel Marine years and years ago. Uh, I was deployed in Iraq in two thousand nine, and our uh, our Master Gunny hit me up. He's like, Hey man, I got some bad news for you. You're going to recruiter school. All right, oh. I got tag got tagged on the uh, on the hearse. Right, so. Um, from there, I went up to Montana, did my recruiter and staff to IC time up there because that's where me and my wife are from. Um, so it's super rural, spread out. You know, my my alpha sector is a staff to IC. I think his male high school senior counts like 420 kids, and like 62 high schools. You know, he had two IRTs. So um, so I kind of learned that way. Uh, a couple years into it, you know, I was trying to, uh, to figure out what I wanted to do with my life and I decided to stick around. So they moved me down to the RS headquarters, which was in Salt Lake City, Utah at the time. Uh, I went down there. I was the, the ARI, the RI, then the operations chief. Uh, from there, I got snatched up to go down to the 12th district to be on the district training team. So I got to teach staff to IC course, which was a lot of fun, right? Travel around, do uh, SRIs and stuff. And then in uh, 2017, 2018, someone at MCRIC, uh at the time said, hey, we've never had career recruiters involved with our marketing stuff. You know, it's always been the public affairs cats. Let's let's throw a couple in and uh, and see what happens. So I was kind of one of the guinea pigs for that. Out the 12th. Oh, wow. it, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. Right. Like most people, I didn't didn't really have any interest in it or see what the point was until I got in there and I, I had to start learning some things. But um as we all know, no good deed goes unpunished. So after doing that for about a year, year and a half at the 12th, they, uh, they slated me out to Mickrick and I got here, uh, probably a little less than a year after COVID kicked off. So I got here in spring of 2019. So, um, I've kind of gotten to see the, the whole evolution, you know, through, you know, the COVID lockdowns and the, mm -hmm. the high school issues. And yeah. you know, I've been, I've been kind of creeping on your, uh, your episodes. You guys talk a lot about, you know, different generations of recruiting people that yeah. have or haven't seen a high school program. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's been a, it's been an interesting run, but, uh, yeah. you know, that's, it's kind of who I am and how I got here. Yeah. So, and then and that's actually something that, that I actually just recently talked on, uh, on my Instagram live about, um, with this new 12, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not sure his name. Um, he's a gunny out of, um, somewhere in California. Um, but he hopped on the live and I was talking with him and we were just talking about how he came at the tail, like, right in the middle of when COVID hit. And I was, that's when I was leaving. Um, and it was cause he was, cause I didn't experience this whole part of, you know, recruiting where schools were closed and you couldn't really go in. Cause like I was there in the very beginning of it. Um, where I saw like, oh shit, like what's gonna happen when the high school community college program closes, right? And then you know now I'm here, and I see the effects of it because not only was so my sector that I'm currently in, it was affected by COVID, but then it was gap sectored as well. So COVID 
allowed us to go and finally we were able to go back into the schools but then it was gap sectored so it was still hard to create a relationship and stuff so now i'm i'm dealing with that um <clears throat> but so what what advice do you have like so well before we get to the advice part so what is your job and what like what does it entail like when you were when you're traveling because you're traveling all the time to different rs's to different rs's i'm sorry rs's and different districts and, and stuff like that. So when you were like your day to day, what are you doing? What are you training Marines on? Um, and what, how, how could you be of use to everybody? Like what's the best thing? Okay. Um, so basically when you like nobody, nobody really knows how it's structured till you get in it. Right. But when you look at actual like Marine Corps personnel that work our marketing stuff, you come up to Micric headquarters and it's, it's like 10 people right? Including a couple civilians. It's not like this big robust shop that people mm -hmm. would expect. Um, so I work for a civilian deputy, a GS 13. Um, and I've got three, uh, three or four captains that kind of sit with me and they're the ones that do the day to day between us and Wonderman Thompson, right? The, the ad agency that we, we contract with. So, um, I've got one that does, uh, and he's got a staff center that helps him out that does brand awareness, which is, you know, commercial, social media, content collection, videos, like all that type of stuff. I've got one that does lead generation stuff. So that's marines.com. That's our direct mail program, the call center, anything and everything that generates a PPC. And then I've got one that uh, does what we call recruiter support. So this is your macabre, your trifolds, your, your promo and incentive items, your EAC gear, uh, the squad bay app, all that stuff. Um, but the kicker is, is none of them have ever been on recruiting duty before. Right. So mm -hmm. they're there for like their B bill at time. Um, so my role when I'm not traveling is it's a little bit RI cause I have to teach them how recruiting duty works. Right. Not yeah. just, not just enlisted, but officer recruiting prior service, all that. Um, it's a little bit of, of ops work. I do some mission analysis. I kind of look at where we're at for, you know, contracting and shipping, what markets we're, we're prospecting or contracting in um, to provide them some rudder steers on, hey, we should look for, you know, things in this market, more seniors, more grads, whatever it happens to be. Um, and then the, uh, the district level, um, it's kind of the same thing. They've got one captain, they've got an 8412 marketing chief and a, and a 4591 comstrat chief. And I'm kind of uh, a, a little bit they don't really work for us. So staff and CIC is not really the right term, but I spend a lot of time kind of plugging them with those guys. Just, Hey, what are you guys up to? What are you doing? Um, because it's a little over half of McRick's budget every year goes into this program. Um, so there's a lot of eyeballs on how we spend money, when we spend it, what we get for spending it. So um, when I'm not traveling, that's, that's what I'm doing. When I'm on the road, it's, basically any any training opportunity i get right so i go out and visit each of the districts once or twice a year um i teach in every uh aside from recruiter school i teach in every micric formal course um and then a lot of times i'll get invited out to you know whether it's uh, staff cic training 8412 symposium stuff like that to kind of kind of go out and preach the gospel so um then about once every other month i got to go down to atlanta to, to do some work down at the ad agency so that's kind of uh it's a it's an interesting gig for sure but it definitely keeps me on the road got you so um so what advice do you have for like the local like for the the care and visit recruiter the station commander when it comes to us trying to get as much marketing as we can you know as far as that like you know for instance like when i was doing it yesterday like when you're um you're filling out the um the list scheduling cards and you're, you're filling out the right for the high school community college program. And one of the questions for the athletic department is, do they allow marketing in the gym? Um, what did, how do, what's your advice for, you know, like how could we bring up that conversation to the principal or the education department or the superintendent to, Hey, how do we get a banner in the gym? Like, what would you say that would look like that conversation? Um, so it's a lot of it's going to kind of, I mean, you hit on it earlier. A lot of it's going to kind of depend on your relationship with that school, right? Like, you know, better than I do. It's been a, been a hot minute since I was working high schools myself, but some are friendlier than others. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and especially when it comes down to us doing any sort of paid efforts, 
Um, typically what I tell, and this is what I tell the RSTOs when they come out, it's the same conversation I have with everybody. But if we're, if we're going to be paying someone, you always want to look for something that's going to enhance your level of access. Right. So like a lot of people, they'll get fixated on the banner, right? Well, a lot of times, yeah, I got a banner up there. It says marines.com, whatever. Uh, maybe I got a QR code on it that goes to a lead form so I can actually collect and, and track PVCs from it. That's good. Um, but if it doesn't do anything to change my access to the school, uh, the most valuable marketing tool we have isn't being employed. And that's, that's a Marine in, in blues and boots and use with a pull-up bar, whatever it happens to be, right? Like there's no, there's no tactic that we can put in place that that's more effective than that. So, um, when you, when you start approaching and start having those conversations, it's, it's always, you know, kind of, uh, good sense to, to kind of get a feel for how many other vendors, uh, might potentially be working with that school. Um, some are pretty heavy on it, right. Whether it's, you know, colleges, gyms, sports programs, whatever. Um, some you walk in there and there's, there's nothing, right. You've got like their state championship banners and that's it. Um, and one of the things is, is if it's very rare that they're going to allow us to put up some sort of signage or a banner or something and not allow everybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, but it, I mean, at the end of the day, there's, there's generally someone in that school, um, uh, that, that handles that type of stuff. It's one of those things where words matter. Right. So I try and stay away from the term sponsorship because, mm -hmm. uh, Legally, like we can't buy, we can't buy gear for schools. I've been asked that before. Um, we can't, uh, we can't buy jerseys for them. Right. But um, something that some people have done is, Hey, the school wants to put an EGA on their football jerseys. Right. Like there's a difference between us buying something to give to the school yeah. and us paying for a branding element. So mm. uh, I, I guess the, the, the best course of action is just, get a feel for what that school or that community college or whatever, what they seem to be doing yeah. um, at ask for a uh, proposal. Don't start talking dollars with them because you can get yourself in trouble um, and then bring it back to, to the RS Mac. And if you guys are gapped or if you don't have one, uh, the XO can float it up to the district, but we, we look at that stuff and evaluate those things all the time. Gotcha. Um, a lot of times what you run into is, a school will assume that because we're the government, we got a, a fat stack of cash and they'll ask you for like 10 grand or something, which is just, it's, it's outside of the, the pale, you know? God, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just always, always seek a method to, to enhance access, generate leads. Um, we, uh, we got a, every six months we send a report up to the office of secretary of defense on, we spent money on X and this is what we got. And, you know, I was just looking Friday and, for things that the regions, districts, and RSs do so far, this FY we're up to about 1.6 million, give or take. Uh, that's been spent on things that we're reporting zero leads returned from, oh, um, wow. which is yeah, which is a hard so thing how, to explain. So how as so how can we, um, you know, as canvassing recruiters and station commanders, how can we push that? Like, what's the bet? What would you say? Like, I, I know being in uniform, being out there, but like when like what advice would you have as far as that's concerned? Because something that I'm confused about and I might just be maybe I'm crazy and I just don't see it and I'm stupid. But the thing that I don't get is that. So, you know, the um, the current take one stands that we have. Right. Yep. And the current like little bi trifles that we have. Yep. Um, why is it? that there isn't a QR code on that or anything. Cause the old ones had the tear away that you would put in the mail and then mail out. Now there's nothing on it. Yes. Like, so why is there not like a QR code? Why is there not like, and then my question, and this is something that I have brought up to my station commander and I'll, I'll clearly I'll have to pay out of pocket. But one of the things that my buddy used to do when those first came out, was he would go to Staples and he would get the label maker made and then he would have his Instagram on it and all that. So my question is, is that how do we create or maybe because I just I just got back, maybe this is something that's already created. But is there a way for us to get a QR code that is generated for the Marines.com EPBC profile and then this way put it on those pamphlets that don't have yep. it? Yeah, yeah. So um 
we got a couple questions in there. So the first one, why isn't there QR codes on the current stuff? Uh, most of those were redone probably like four or five years ago. Um, and that feedback just wasn't presented at the time. So like we only, um, every year when we outline requirements, there's only a certain amount of funding that's put towards either updating collateral or creating new stuff. Right. Gotcha. So, um, so as we gather feedback, we have to prioritize. Um, but what you're talking about with the QR codes and the link, there's some places where they've done this already, but, um, through the district WT rep, so your, your RS Mac or your district, um, we create them all the time for different things, but they can create something called a vanity URL, right? So mm -hmm. if you ever see on like social where it says like marines.com slash RS whatever, right? When someone goes to that and they fill out the lead there, we can track it to that specific link, right? So in some places, uh, what they've done is they've gone out and they've created like a, you know, marines.com slash RS, whatever, take ones. And then they just mass print little one inch by one inch QR codes and they stick either they stick it on the front of the, uh, the take one stands or they stick it on the trifold. Um, and the reason that that helps um, compared to a generic one is if we put the same generic one on every single trifold throughout the entire country, then I don't necessarily know that it was yours. Oh, okay. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. like, it's, it's the same thing with social media, right? Like a lot of the RSs will have a, uh, a vanity URL says marines.com slash RSSDO for San Diego, for instance. Okay. If, a if a recruiter sends someone to that, I can track the link to that specific, that specific URL. Whereas if they just tell a kid to go to marines.com, it goes in one big ass bucket and we can't tell really where that kid saw that link from. Um, and so getting that stuff set up, it's, it's something that the Macs are trained on when they come through the Mac course. Um, but we cram a lot of stuff in their head for those two weeks. So one of the roles of that district marketing chief, that 8412 at the district, which for you guys up in the first, it's, uh, it's Master Art Daily, right, is they get schooled up on how those things work so that when you guys identify, hey, I'm trying to do X, they can advise you on what steps need to be taken to, to get to that. Um, so that's kind of a, a long answer to your question, but the short answer is yes, there's a way to do that. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, getting an email to get the damn link set up and then, you know, through supplier or whatever, purchasing the, the little stickies to print the QR code on, um, most browsers now, I mean, you know, Google Chrome has a built in QR code generator. So generating the QR code from a, a link isn't, isn't that hard. Got you. Okay. Um, and then, so we were also talking about um, Squad Bay. What, how do we use that? And me and you said this, we were talking about it. <laughs> you know, it's crazy because like when it came out, it be like you were saying that it had this one intention. And then all of a sudden it became this thing where Sergeant Majors were just like, hey, make sure this new thing gets implemented every single day. And it's got to be touched every day. And then instead of it becoming a tool, then people were just like, Recruiters are like, bro, another thing I got to deal with. Um, but it yeah. is something that is as helpful. But I feel like a lot of people don't understand how to actually use it correctly. Um, and I feel like it doesn't get the, the correct fame that it should have because it's supposed to help us. So can you kind of go into, into that? Like, how should we be using it? What is the purpose of it? What's the intent behind it? Um, and how can we get the best bang out of it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, to give you a little bit of a history lesson, so the requirement for that was actually scoped um, and given to the agency back in like 2018. Um, and really the reason for it, and you'll remember, and we used to have like the little tin boxes, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about, right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, well, uh, during the last uh, presidency, they put in a bunch of uh, rules and regulations about like, you got to buy stuff from America, raw materials got to be sourced from America. Well, we can't buy those tins anymore. Not, not at a price point that makes sense, right? Because we would, we would manufacture about 50,000 welcome aboard kits every year between the officer and the enlisted side. Um, and at 18 bucks a pop, that's, that's just under a million dollars oh, wow. by the time you just for that, them, right? Yeah. Just, just for those. And then just for any, somebody just to pick it up and throw it out as soon as they walk in the house. So. Right. Um, <laughs> I still have then, mine. I still yeah, have yeah. mine that my recruiter gave me. It's still, it's sitting over yeah. here on the, on the table. Um, and so what would happen is one, we had that. And then two, 
um, there was all kinds of stuff changing, right? Like they, Hey, female Marines are going to do pull-ups now. We're going to allow push-ups during the, I like they started to change all these things. And every time they changed a standard, we would have to dump the entire inventory, whether it was used or not oh, and reprint. Um, right. Oh, okay. So, so the idea came out, we're like, Hey, you know, aside from like the stickers and the, the cards, right. Everything that's in this, in this little like training book, we could put that in an app and we're good. Right. Mm-hmm. So they did a, they did a survey of the pool at the time, like 96 or 97% of kids in the pool had a, a compatible smartphone at the time. Right. Yeah. You always got a few that don't. Uh, but most did. And so the initial rollout at the beginning of 2019 was super bare. Like it didn't do anything. It was just an app that had a book in it. It didn't do, didn't do nothing. Right. Um, And we didn't really touch it for a year or so. And then as luck would have it, COVID happened. Right. So now we can't do in-person pool functions. We can't do in-person pool PT. We can't do any of these things. And they came back and they're like, all right, well, we can't do all this other stuff. Let's juice this thing up. Right. So for the last probably two, three years, we've been Frankenstein bolting things onto it because it was always like, it started off as, Hey, I've got my knowledge in it. It'd be cool if I could chat. Cool. We'll, we'll try and build that in there. Well, it'd be cool if I could submit referrals. Cool. We'll try and put that in there. It'd be cool if it could do this. It'd be cool if it could do that. So every, you know, two, three months for the past couple of years, there's been a feature update that has added something to it. Right. Um, and sometimes it's broken the code. Sometimes it's gotten clunky. It's, you know, overall it's in a better place, but um, as this thing developed, what you saw is um, you have this initial app that rolls out, which just, you know, a, a book, right. And at the time, everyone's like, oh, well, that's for the poolies. That's a pool program thing. It belongs to Sergeant Major, right? Well, fast forward a couple of years, um, public users can get in there and use it now, whether or not they're in the program. It generates PPCs, uh, PPC programs squarely in the OPSOs lane. Uh, the entire collateral material suite for enlisted and officers digitized and put in there in like bite-sized snippets. So you can airdrop stuff to kids. You can text it, you can post it on social, you can email it, whatever. Um, so sales collateral and the sales process that's squarely in the RIs lane, right? Uh, we've got plenty of, of pool program stuff in there. So it's, it's turned into something that it's not, it doesn't belong to a single person mm-hmm. uh, or a single program manager, but we're just naturally, you know, tech averse mm-hmm. um, as an organization. So it's, you know, just, uh, Last week, you know, the, the, the G3, the colonel up here at Micra comes over and I answer this question probably every, you know, two, three months or so. He's like, hey, top, like, what do we got for, for Spanish collateral? Right. And Yo. yeah. And so I start and so I start busting stuff out and we don't yeah. print. Right. And we didn't have any for years because to pass the ASVAB, someone's got to read, speak English. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but like two and a half years ago we rolled out a Spanish parents guide Mm -hmm. with education benefits, jobs, like all the stuff a parent Mm -hmm. would want to know. We've got in PDF, we've got it digitized in squad bay. We've got it hung on the the SharePoint site that people can go to for launch memos and training and stuff. Yeah. Um, And I, I show it to the G3 and he's like, yeah, this is good. How long have we had this? I'm like about two years, sir. Wow. Right. And it's just, yeah, see, and that's the thing is, I think there's so yeah. many things that are there that nobody even knows it's there. But, like, yeah. you know, and something that I was talking to, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, um, but Dr. Jose Flores, First Sergeant Flores. Yep. Um, so I was talking to him recently, and I said that it would be so I have a huge popu- population of Mexican Americans and, and some that aren't. Um, uh, my, my whole area right now is Latinos and a lot of Mexicans that I've been starting to talk to and get in the school like i i think last month i contracted one and then i got a dominican and then a lot of spanish people are in my area so a lot of what i was realizing is that the kids are about it but the parents aren't so one thing that i was talking to dr flores first on flores about was i said to him i think it would be greatly i don't know how it would happen like on a bigger scale but like you know how they like there was that i think it was like a history channel where like we have it in a dvd where you put it in the dvd and it, you put it on the tv and it's this marine sergeant talking in spanish to about the boot camp and all this stuff well 
in my mind, I was like one that needs to be updated because the Marine Corps has greatly changed since then. But it would be amazing if First Sergeant Flores was talking about because most people that I talk to when it comes to like the Mexican descent and um, people who have immigrated here, the first thing that their parents tell them is education, education, education. And then a lot of the times they're also working two or three jobs. So he highly identifies with that because that's literally what he what he was dealing with when he was trying to join the Marine Corps. His mom was like, no, you need to get a degree. So I was talking to him and I was like, it would be phenomenal if there was a video of you explaining your you joining the Marine Corps, why you joined and what you've created and what you've done. And then also a video of your mother in Spanish talking about her views and how how her views of you changed and the Marine Corps changed and what it's done for you. Um, and because like for me, it's it's hard for me, especially because in our office, we don't have a Spanish speaker. So like every single time I get on the phone with a mom, I'm like Sargento Bennett, la you know, telefono numero, and I'm trying to get mom on the phone, and then they do. But a lot of the times I lose kids because the kids committed, but mom is just not about it at all. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe if I had a video that I could show mom and dad that was already in Spanish, maybe that would help me out a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that, so when we talk about stuff like that, that's where um, the, the balance between employing the ad agency and doing stuff organically within the Marine Corps kind of becomes a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's, a, there's a fixed pot of resources that we pay to, to Wonderman Thompson. Mm -hmm. And every year, right, we probably, we probably only get about 80% of what it is we say is a requirement because we just, we just don't have the cash. Right. But when you talk about things like that, that's why we have this Comstrat enterprise of, you know, green side Marines that are trained photographers, videographers, all those things. Uh, it's kind of hard to task organize them at, at points. Some of the depots and districts are getting a little bit better. Um, but it's also a matter of making sure that we understand what the, the domino effect is. Right. So like the, the Spanish parents guide is a prime example. Right. So, yeah, it's in Spanish, but you have, you know, three or four major dialects of Spanish that are going to be used in the U yeah. in the U.S. alone, yeah. depending on where you're at. Right. Mm -hmm. Like where you're up in the Northeast, you got Texas, you got down in Florida. Right. With people coming over from Cuba and stuff like you have all these different dialects. Um, and then you start to think about other languages. Right. Like Mandarin is huge yeah. in yeah. some areas. Right. Yeah. Um, Same thing with so, Filipino. Like they speak. Right multiple different dialects um you know like there's there's multiple a guy in my office like i don't i don't there's multiple different dialects that they speak in the philippines and, right yeah so it's it's one of those things where there's this balance between like because we know we can't do all of them yeah. right so it, it turns into like what is a want vice what is a need you know at one point we had uh we had someone that wanted us to do the entire macabre in Spanish, right? So the macabres, we print them in bulk and we ship them straight to recruiter school. But by the time those those red books are printed and landed, they're like two hundred bucks a pop, Each? right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Right. So when you're talking at scale, right, a couple thousand of those things a year, right? So um, I, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. About the macabre, just because if I if I don't ask them. Uh, I, and, and I feel like the answer is probably going to be like, hell no, that's crazy. It would be too hard. But like the thing that I don't like about the macabre, and I understand that as recruiters, we're supposed to, you know, um, uh, customize them ourselves and stuff like that. But in my mind, it would it be that hard for every state or every district to have their own macabre? Because like the reason why I say that is because like in the macabre, right, we have Gunny Ermy and we have these people who like not to be disrespectful, they no 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 one in today's generation knows who these people are. They're like who I don't know who that guy is. But in each district, there's Marines who are successful business owners, who are entrepreneurs, who, you know, like in my state alone, right? In Freehold, New yep. Jersey. There's a guy who owns Simplify CrossFit, um, Simplify Boxing. So, like, if there's locally owned places across district 
then is it physically impossible or would it be that hard if each district had their own macabre that was unified to that district? So it wouldn't be the way that that would probably work is we'd still have the baseline macabre that everybody gets at recruiter school, right? Yeah, um, but just different but, inserts. Right, different inserts. Um, where it comes down to stuff like that, and it's this is a, as good a form as any because I've been dropping this dime like a manhole cover for months. Um, so every year we do this thing near the end of March. It's called the, the Sales Marketing Review Board. We get you know a couple of recruiters, a couple of staff CICs, a couple of Macs, uh, a couple of OSOs or OSAs, a couple of EMV drivers, some other, you know, about 20, 25 people. We jam them in a room. And we basically get waterboarded with everything that's in the inventory from the agency, right? Every video, every print product, like the whole inventory. Um, and we provide either feedback directly from ourselves or, or as representatives from, you know, whatever district we came from. This last year, Micric switched to Office 365 and all that stuff like last October, November, right? So in December, I built out this, uh, this portal using Teams and SharePoint where anybody in Micrit goes to this little Microsoft form. They type their stuff in, right? It gives me like, this is what I'm talking about. This is my point of feedback. And then it spits me out their email address so I can reach out if I have questions about their feedback, right? So I built this thing in December. I pushed Word out right when it was done. And then probably two, three times between December and the end of March. And I actually have a graph that shows how much feedback I got. And I got zero up until the end of March when we actually did that review board. Um, so going back to the, the point about like getting word out, it's one of those things where a lot of people, either this program's an afterthought, right? Or, you know, RS Max, a lot of them are super young. A lot of times it's their second duty station, maybe their third, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have to, especially as a recruiter or a staff in CIC, whether it's them, whether it's, you know, asking the RI who the district marketing chief is, whether it's just sending me a damn email directly, doesn't hurt my feelings at all. I get them all the time. Um, we have to get better as an enterprise, getting that feedback mechanism or that feedback loop going, because absent that, um, what we end up getting is whatever that room of, you know, 20, 25 people come up with, which, uh, and a lot of times is, is good stuff. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not, but um, it's certainly not going to tell me about the dude in Jersey that owns Semper Fi Boxing and how you guys want to customize insert. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, cause it's like, cause it's like, it's yep. like, and that's my thing is that like, cause in New Jersey, I, I can't tell you the amount of people that I know that are Marines that are business owners or that are yep. in our schools or even even that, like if you turn to the education tab and you have the principal of whatever high school who is a Marine or, you know, this person, this faculty advisor who is a Marine, because um, they're all littered through New Jersey or, you know, even like Jim Curley Kia, the, the guy, he's a Marine, his son's a Marine and his brother's a Marine. And they're all Purple Heart recipients, I'm pretty sure. And they own, like, one of the largest car dealerships in New Jersey. Um, so it's like people know the name, but they don't They don't know that he's a Marine and that he got all of that, you know, that right. he, he pushed it. Because every time you see him, he's like, oh, Marine Corps this. Like, he does, you know, um, a nonprofit. Every year he does a fundraiser for Toys for Tots. And he has local local veterans come out. And he raises like all this money for toys for tots. And it's like, which is another thing too, is in the macabre, why don't we have toys for tots in there? Like, why is that not in the macabre? To be honest, there's probably no reason why it's not, other than the fact that it's a Mark for Res program. Like it wasn't it, it wasn't intentionally omitted. But that's what I'm saying, though. Like, like when yeah. it comes to like families and stuff, right? A lot of times, everybody thinks the Marine Corps is this war warrior mentality and nothing else. But that may be a helpful thing to be like, actually, you know what? Hey, you've probably heard of the Toys for Tots program. This is what it is. This is what it was founded. And as a reservist, you're going to help out with this, and you're going to get community service hours, and da, da da da. And then this way, it's something else that's in there. Yep. And you yeah. know, and and it's also like um, one of the other things I was going to ask you too was just like. When it comes to, um, oh wow, I forgot. Oh, I had it. I had it. Oh man, I don't know. So, so while you're circling that yeah, thought, please, there, yeah. 
there's uh there's a couple things that we're trying to do to to streamline this right so um and it's relatively new but when oh, you log I got in it. I got it. you got it yeah i got it I'll, so i'll, I'll pause what you all got? right so and, and this is for you but it's also for anyone who's listening and this is my just my humble opinion if you are a recruiter not a prior service recruiter have your mac order the reserve pamphlets that the PSRs get because those things are like this big and they have everything in it. The yellow ribbon program, the, the difference between the GI bills. Like, and my question is, is that why does the PSR get that one? And we get these little small ones. Cause that's the feedback that was provided. Yeah. That's no way. Answer. See like, yeah. no, they like, listen, no, I, I'm not saying no way to you. I'm saying like, yeah. If you if you ha if you're not tracking on the one the PSR has, go to your local PSR and look at it. And if especially from an active duty Marine standpoint who doesn't know a lot about the reserve program, for you to have and hold that, you'll learn so much about the reserve program just by opening up that pamphlet because literally every it talks about RNDTing, it talks about the different pay scales. It talks about drill pay. It talks about the yellow ribbon program, like everything that's about the reserve program is in that pamphlet. That's also why when we redid over the last couple of years, we redid all three macabs, the, the yeah. listed one, the OSA one and the, the PSR one. That's why we made sure that all three of those digital copies were in the ad portal where you guys could get to them. Mm. Right. Cause it, cause once again, it goes back to the, um, price points a little bit different for the officer and the PSR one, but they're still a, a pretty penny. But the digital ones get updated probably once a quarter, right? Maybe maybe two three times a year. Kind of depends on what's going on. Um, but the digital ones that are inside the uh, the ad portal, the PDFs are are all there, right? So yeah, as a non prior service recruiter, I'm going to get issued my red book when I go to recruiter school, but I still have access to the other two, and I can pull you know, snippets from them based off of things that I'm, I'm talking about a lot. But um, what I was going to say before you asked about that is uh, a few things that we're trying to do to streamline this um, right now, when someone logs into the ad portal, right? Like most people just log in, they look for the little PPC widget. Yeah. Like that's, a, that's the only thing they give a shit about. Right. I'm Got not going to lie. I didn't, uh, I didn't know there was anything yeah. more there besides that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um so there's a couple, a couple that I would encourage people to check out. The first one, if you go into education center and then there's uh, there's like other training materials, I think it's what it's called. Um, there's a whole host of stuff on digital engagement, social media in there. There's PDF versions of all the collateral pieces. Um, the enlisted officer and reserve macabres are in there digitally. Um, and then there's also another little widget that's newer um, and it's not all the way built out yet, but it's called brand system. And when you go into that, there's a resources and library section that will give you all kinds of stuff about, you know, how we break down competitively compared to other major brands, not just military branches, right. But like Amazon, Starbucks, stuff like that. Um, and we just had a call with, uh, with the agency probably a week or two ago about this effort that we have on contract for a, a recruiter training center to kind of consolidate all of the marketing stuff that might be of interest to a recruiter, staff, so I see or also, whether it's, you know, training materials, sales support materials, videos, photos, because there's a ton of it. It's just scattered all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. People don't know where to find it. Um, so we're trying to do things to streamline that stuff and bring it together as best we can. Yeah. Um, but I would, I would encourage people to dig through that because there's, there's some good nuggets in there that even I didn't realize until I had to learn about it for this gig. Mm -hmm. So, so here's, here's something that I totally off topic and I don't know if you'd be the person to, to ask, but I'm, I'm going to shoot it out there. So when I was, when I worked for a college, I'm not going to say the name of it because I don't, you know, but I worked for a college here in New Jersey and the college, it was the easiest year and a half of my life because they didn't have them. Chris, they used, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. They use what's called Salesforce. Yep. And Salesforce is bro. Yep. I don't know if you ever touched it. That thing is amazing. Like when I try to tell the recruiters and my station commander, like how amazingly seamless this program is. 
I'm like, because like the way that it is is that like, so we at when COVID happened, we did everything from our homes or from we had to go into the office a couple of times, but we would do our, our interviews virtually on Teams, and then we would do all of the paperwork on the computer, and we would just share the screen, and then they would do all their contracts, they would sign, they would print it out, they would everything would be done virtually and on the computer, and then if I needed to send it to, um the fafa they would they already had their login and they just all they had to do was go to the applicants portal and then boom they saw the signature they saw everything there it was filled out their social everything was there and then boom so like my thing and my confusion and then on top of that every lead card it had all their information it had their social media it had their phone number it had their email and then all you had to do was click it and then it would go straight to to teams and then teams would call the number and then it would update that you called it and then you didn't have to click anything else it would it would put no show no answer it would put contact made all of those things and it made life so much easier and and then and everything updated in real time and yep. and you could text the person you could email back and forth with them they and 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 honestly what they what would also happen is if they blocked you it would tell you hey this person has blocked you you they will no longer receive phone numbers uh text messages from you so here's my question if a company that is very small and only has three schools in new jersey can afford that why can't the Marine Corps have a product that does that? Because like if we had a product that literally like MEPS and us opened up everything and everything was paperless and all the contracts and then the depot had it like think about how much the package process would slow down. Yep. Think about how much the C2C chain would slow down. Think about like how everything would get tightened up and how much easier it would be. But like, is this like just asinine? Like, is this something that could never happen? Like, why can't the Marine Corps just use Salesforce? So I have to deal. So McCris is its own thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we've been trying to connect the ad portal and McCris for years. So I got to deal with all the same ass pain, right? Um, what it comes down to is the classic, we're the government and we're here to help, right? So when you are a DOD entity, right? the rules governing storage and use of PII, the types of systems, cloud servers that they can be hosted in or can't mm -hmm. are different than basically anybody else. Gotcha. Right. Got so you. what ends up happening? So, and I'll, I've, I work with the McCris team quite a bit, but I don't want to, I don't want to speak on their no, cheese. Yeah, I'm course. not in that project. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I can give you an example from, from the, the ad agency side. Right. So, um, we're not necessarily the biggest fish in their pond, right? They work with Coke, they work with Bose, they work with Verizon, like they work with some legit companies, right? Um, any advertising agency anywhere, for the most part, anyone that's reputable um, can use, you know, consumer behavioral databases and these other things. And basically the, the simple way to explain it is like, I'm a white dude from Montana. You know, if I buy a Remington rifle at Cabela's and I Google George Foreman grills, some computer algorithm somewhere says I'm 92% likely to buy a Ford F-150, right? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to start getting served ads for Ford F-150s. Um, any commercial entity to include educational institutions can do that. The DOD has not been allowed to do that at all up until about four months ago when they signed or six months ago now, I guess when they decide, when they signed the new uh, national defense authorization act. Right. So they sign into law, Hey, we can collect this personal data. We can start doing some of this cool stuff, but then there is a little bullet in there that states the prospect, right. The individual we're doing this for, right. Or doing this to has to explicitly opt in to allow us to do those things. Right. Okay. So when you, when you do a, a comparison functionally all the stuff that you're talking about is what we're trying to do it's a matter of we end up playing by a different set of rules because you know we're the government we're here to help um and it's it, we run into it with with all kinds of stuff you know we have uh commercial off-the-shelf vendors that'll come and 
you know, whether they come to us at Micric or they come to a, you know, random RSCO, district CO, you know, hey, we've got this app and it does this thing. Cool. Um, but the problem is, is if they're not hosted in a, you know, IL4 FedRAMP compliant cloud environment, which I don't know what half that means, but I know that that's the tagline, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's gotcha. basically like a, it's like a non-starter. So mm. what we end up doing is having to Frankenstein things together because we can't go out and just pick something up and, and use it that way. Yeah. Um, which sucks and is unfortunate and doesn't do anything to help anybody, but yeah. it's no, just I, got, I get it. Reality. It just, it just does. It sucks. Yeah. Cause like once, once I worked for this college and I was dealing with Salesforce and like when my coworkers would complain about it, I would just stop them and be like, yo, you don't understand what you're complaining about. Like mm-hmm. you don't want what I had. Like, like you don't want yeah. what we had to deal with because like, and, yeah. and, and cause like, dude, it was just such an amazing, like, the way that every lead card was set up and the way that like everybody could touch it and everybody could see it. And, you know, as soon as this updated and that updated and this boom, boom, boom. And oh, it was just, wow. Yeah. But, um, yeah. all right. So, um, yeah, so nah. what, um, what, what advice do you have, uh, when it comes to digital engagement? Um, okay. because I'll be completely honest with you. I don't, I, I, I'm only 32, so I don't think it's cause I'm old. Um, I just don't get how to be effective on the with dcs um and i okay. feel like a lot of people don't because like you know a lot of people like i'll send out 200 dcs and get maybe two contacts and don't get like, so yeah. yeah and it's like, and then it's so time consuming um yeah. because if you send out so many then your account gets stopped for a moment and then this happens and that happens and so i don't know um what 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 can you shed light on on that like like what you know ttps or yeah what, yeah So, um, so I mean, there was a handful of us when we started building curriculum for this stuff a few years ago, but, um, you got to think of it almost as like three different things, right? So, um, you have digital engagement or, or electronic medium as a source, right? Like you become aware of a kid because maybe they, they like something on your page, right? Or they shared something, they comment or whatever, um, but when you dig into the doctrine, into the it, really, there's a, a two page chunk of the volume three that talks about it. But when you get into the curriculum, there's a lot of verbiage where it talks about the purpose of digital engagement being to gain exposure and build rapport. Right. And we've we've heard those terms before somewhere yeah. else. Right. <clears throat> um, and it's true. Right. So that if you look at if you look at the recruiters that are most successful when it comes to D.C.'s, it's not because they sit down and they cold list DC 200 names because it's, it's time consuming. Um, and I tell people all the time, you know, I, I crack jokes about, you know, I got a face for radio. So that, that blonde <laughs> shit named Svetlana is a 500 pound dude named Bill sitting in his mom's <laughs> basement trying to steal my credit card. You know what I mean? Like that's how I react to it. So how do you think a, a 17, yeah, yeah. 18, 19, 19 year old prospect is going to react? Right. True. True. Um, uh, so the way that the curriculum teaches is, and it's pretty basic, right? Because you have some dudes that are just not naturally, you know, inclined for that stuff. But the way the curriculum teaches is when you're posting content on your platforms, it's supposed to be about the, the enlisted recruiting process, right? Showing kids, joining the depth, what you guys do during the pool program, going to boot camp, graduating, excuse me, doing good things in the fleet. And then you're sprinkling whatever else in there because they got to know that you're a person too, right? It can't just be like screaming eagles and motivation 24-7. Um, and what you end up developing is if you think of your digital engagement program almost like a high school community college program just somewhere else, right? You imagine the internet is kind of this other location. Um, those are the two places where you're going to have FaceTime with an applicant, right? Either in the school or online. Like that's mm-hmm. it. Right. Okay. Especially, um, especially, you know, if you're in an AO where they're working a lot, like you're, you're probably not going to be snagging that kid before you getting your ass kicked out of Walmart for soliciting. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, but they, there has to be something there, right. And it has to be uh, organic and relevant to them. So what I see a lot of recruiters do, which is not a good thing is they'll just go to the Marine Corps recruiting stuff, like the generic recruiting stuff and they'll reshare it. Right that stuff is not designed 
to do the same thing as when you reach out to an applicant. So if you think about it in, in layers, right. If you go, if you go to a movie in the movie theater, um, before the, the movie starts, depending on what chain you're in, you're going to see a, a 60 to 90 second spot for Coca-Cola, right? Mm. Almost any movie theater in the country. You're going to see the logo. You're going to see the colors. You're going to hear the fizz. You're going to hear them open in a can. And it's not designed to get you to go buy a Coke right there, right? It doesn't have a tagline at the end that says, now get your ass up and go buy a Coke. But when you get thirsty halfway through that movie and you wander back out front, you're probably going to buy a Coke because it's top of mind, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that national level stuff is designed to do, whether it's a commercial, whether it's a video on our YouTube channel, it's just designed to get them to recognize the logo, the voice, the way the videos are shot, you know, the uniforms, the things that drive action are when they start to see content that they link to their life, right? It happened at their high school, um, you know, happened at the gym they work out at, maybe it's a, a football game they were at, it's a kid that they know right, that, that joined the Marine Corps, won the NROTC scholarship. And as you're posting this content, you're telling that story, you're tagging the kids, you're tagging the school, you're tagging the locations, and that local audience is going to see it when they begin to engage with that content, because they will, right, they'll, they'll slam that like button or they'll, they'll comment or they'll share it. Those are the names that you try and engage with via those DCs, because mm-hmm. now we have, now we have a rapport clue, right? Yeah. So, so you go back to you go back to the basics and talk about engage. The very first wrong turn is attempting to engage without building rapport, right? When you cold call DC like that, that's exactly what you're trying to do. They don't know you, right? Yeah. Um, now it's a little bit different if I go and you know, I, let's say I go give a class talk and there's 30 kids in that classroom. They all fill out their little class talk sheet. I try and count it as 30 ACs because I'm scummy. If I got a good boss, he tells me to pound stand, right? Um, but Bro, now, yo, just, 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 yo, yeah. just, uh, just, I gotta say it on that. Like, I agree with you a thousand percent because you know why I agree with you? Because if you do that shit, you're a dirtbag. And the reason why you're a dirtbag is one, because you're running your numbers up. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the word dirtbag because you are. You're running your numbers up. Number two, you're going to put, Oh, AC contact. And even if you didn't get their number, you put it as an AC contact. So the first contact was AC. And even, meanwhile, they were just in the room. They didn't even have any conversation with them. They filled out a freaking thing and they put not interested. And you put an AC contact not interested. And now me, I'm calling that list and it says first contact made AC contact but there's no phone number for me to follow up with. There's no DC for me to follow up with. There's absolutely nothing for me to do. And all I know is you AC conducted them like, no, no. Right. Right. No, but I can, because then, because then on top of that, then that contract, if they ever contract, it'll be an AC contract, even though that's not how I got a hold of them. And you didn't even do your job. You just had somebody fill out a freaking contact card. Like, Oh, I hate it. I hate got it. him. Got him. That 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 touched you on a nerve there a little bit. Because <laughs> I can't. St- I'm dealing with it right now. <laughs> I don't know how many. I don't know how. I'm I'm calling the Lakewood High School list, and I don't know how many people I'm I'm seeing there. First contact, AC contact, and then it doesn't even say was it morning, afternoon, evening, and then it doesn't have a phone number. It doesn't have nothing in the freaking interest block. It has. It just. Oh well, I got an AC contact that day. Like like, bro, really? So something you can do with those contact sheets, right? I come back with my 30 class surveys, whatever we call them. I can certainly go down and start shooting DCs to those kids, right? Because now I may not have talked to you, right? We didn't have a face-to-face conversation. I didn't shake your hand. But now when they get that message, there's, there's context. They know who I am. They've seen me. They know I'm a real person, right? I'm going to get a better return from that than if I would just go down a list and blindly DC people. So it's one of those things where you don't want to try to reach out to someone that you have no rapport or context clue with, because you can do it law of averages, right? Like I can power through with volume. Um, I mean, technically you could sit down with a phone and just dial random phone numbers and by the law of math, eventually you're going to contact someone in your AO that wants to be a Marine might take you 30 years, but you will. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's an example of if we're going to post content out there, we want it to be relevant. 
to that area, right? That school, those kids, because they're going to engage with it. And then those other things that we do, whether it's, you know, high school pull-up bar challenges, class talks, it's an extension of the normal recruiting stuff that we've always done. It's not a replacement. Um, gotcha. at, and I think that's where a lot of people kind of go off the rails, right? They view it as a replacement. I don't have to do ACs anymore. I don't have to make phone calls anymore. I don't have to do class talks. You still got to do all those things, yeah, right? Yeah. This is just a, it's just an extension or a different way to communicate. Um, so I think that's, that's, so that's a couple of things to chew on. So from what I, I gathered from that is gain a, a social media presence and have a story to tell and get people to understand you are a human being and have your story out there, have pulleys in there, talk about the different programs that we provide, have reservists on there, share their stories. And then depending on the different hashtags that you're using is going to help you be able to target that audience. Yeah. I mean, that that's, if you think about it, when you, when you sit down with a kid, you know, parents aside, cause they're their own thing. What are the, what are the main things that make an applicant nervous, right? They want to know what their life's going to be like. They want to know what you're going to do to get them ready to go to boot camp, And they're going to want to know what boot camps could be like, like, that's it. So it's three things. How do I get ready to go to boot camp? What's boot camp like? What's my life going to be like afterwards? We're just gotcha. showing them that, right? We're showing them that and giving them examples of someone that's real, right? Because mm-hmm. your point about the macabre earlier, like, yeah, the, the Arlie Ermey story is great, right? The FedEx CEO is great. The Domino's CEO is great, right? Nobody, nobody, like, they're, they're a person, but they're not someone they know, yeah. right? Talk, talking about the dude that owns the boxing gym in the local neighborhood, that's a prime example of someone that you could do a, you know, 60 second stand up interview on Facebook live with or Instagram or whatever, yeah. and have them talk about it, use hashtags and tag local businesses, schools, things like that. People will engage with that because they know him. Right. So Got that's, you. uh, that would, that would be my, right, uh, no my take on that one. No, that, that, that helps me out a lot. I definitely, um, that definitely helps me out a lot. I'm definitely going to, uh, invest into that this coming week um but do you have anything else for us um any last minute things anything that you want to talk about um or any advice for anybody who's just grinding through it when it comes to marketing and social media and all that uh any last thoughts um i'll uh not necessarily on that stuff i mean i'm a i'm a pretty easy dude to get a hold of right whether it's it's DMs, teams, whatever. Um, I'd encourage anyone to reach out with any, any questions or feedback. Um, I don't get it unless people send it to me. And then the, uh, the last thing, which is not related to marketing stuff at all, but when I creep on your episodes, you talk a lot or you spend a lot of time talking about, you know, mental health, yes, your, yeah. your attitude on the duty, that type of stuff. Um, and that's, that's great. Right. I just, want to remind everybody they're going to come out there for their their three years right it's not the end of the world um i've gone probably to, to every high that you could go on on this duty and every low over the last 12 13 years uh, there's no uh there's no shame in it right and uh i guess my my advice there would be don't let uh don't let it break you down and let your actions out here to define the rest of your careers three years do your job you know um stick to the stick to the basics and by basics i don't mean making 900 phone calls a day i mean <laughs> right like there's there's eight steps in the erp right it's it's going to be the same eight steps 50 years from now did i build my list today and obtain more names did i prospect did i screen people did i sell right did i do all the things i'm supposed to do the little boxes under that change right when i started people had home phone lines i could catch them at dinner that's not the situation you guys are in now mm-hmm. right um, but it's, it's, it's the same process, right? Systematic yeah, recruiting yeah. works. Uh, it's just the little boxes underneath that change. So, Amen. um, yeah. So I guess for you, keep that up, man. The, the mental health stuff is, is yes. huge and it's, it's good for, it's good for folks to be talking about. Definitely. It. Thank you. For, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the, the knowledge. Thank you for the, all the help. Um, and I hope you have a good rest of the night and talk to you soon. Yep. Sounds good, brother. Thanks. All right. Thanks.